In this screencast, I'm going to consider polar coordinates. I want to discuss them in the context of a nonlinear transformation for doing integration. So here I've written the transformation, a nonlinear transformation between r and theta and x and y. So I'm going to use the natural variables r and theta rather than u and v, but if you want, you can think of r as u and theta as v. Right, so and I want to, to think about uh, this, this usual picture we have of a mapping between uh, uv and xy, right? So uv, but now this will be r and theta, and this will be uh, my usual x and y. I'm going to go ahead and just, uh, just state, I'm going to restrict, as we would normally do in this transformation, I'm going to restrict to r greater than or equal to zero, and I'll take uh, theta to be in the range not to two pi. Okay, you could have take, taken some other range of theta, but I'm going to restrict theta strictly in this range, and that's going to limit, um, it's going to limit the range here, call that not and two pi. So we know how this works, but let's just do some. Let's do curves of which of which r is equal to a constant. These are my u curves, the corresponding to u curves. So r is equal to a constant here, r not. And of course, those are going to be circles. Oh, that's not going to be center. Oh, it's not too bad. All right. So I get curves of constant r, which correspond to, to circles. So one of the, the, the fact, uh, properties of the fact that this transformation is nonlinear, it's not linear, is that these straight lines don't get mapped to straight lines under my transformation t. And uh, then, of course, I have my curves at constant theta, and these will correspond to rays. Right, so things that you know. All right. A couple of points worth mentioning. Of course, I didn't. I've I left this off, but I want to now say something about uh, the particular curve when u is equal to, uh, excuse me, when r is equal to zero, let's say r naught is equal to zero, that of course gets mapped to the origin. This is a case where this mapping is not invertible along this line. And actually, let me just go ahead and continue. We also have a, um, a related problem here at uh, theta equal naught and two pi, as these, both of these lines get mapped to the same ray. So in fact, I can do that. Let me choose some other color. I can green. This whole boundary here gets mapped to this ray, including the origin here, particularly. And the the, the this transformation is not invertible on this on this ray corresponding to theta equals zero, including the origin. Um, but that's okay. One of the conditions I stated, but I didn't really emphasize in the notes, is that uh, in terms of doing our integration using this transformation to do our integration. Um, this is fine as long as uh, any points of non-invertibility occur on the boundary of the domain. So if, if I take, um, if gamma is going to be, say, all of this, this is going to be my gamma, the points at which t is non-invertible occur only on the boundaries of gamma, and that uh, that's fine. And the intuition is simply that these points uh, here, they have no area, they have no area here in the uv coordinates, so to say the r theta coordinates, and they get mapped to, to, to no area here, so they just don't uh, cause any problems for the integration. All right, so the final thing I want to say is just, again, something everybody should work out at some point, which is this Jacobian. So the Jacobian of, so x, y, the, um, again, I'm just going to use the natural coordinates here. So that's going to be the determinant, so I'm going to do dx, dr. Well, let me do it, let me write them all out here just one time. dx, dr, dx, d theta, dy, dr, dy, d theta. That determinant is cosine theta, r sine theta, sine theta, r cosine theta. That determinant then gives me r cosine squared theta minus, minus is plus, plus r sine squared theta is equal to r. Okay, so therefore, you just re recall, therefore, what we know in general for integration is that our area element is equal to the absolute value of this Jacobian times, um, in general, du dv. In this case, that will be du and dv correspond to dr and d theta, or r and d theta. And so therefore, we get r dr d theta. So we get the same area element. Well, it had to be the same. We get the same area, area element through this calculation as we previously uh, derived in a slightly more heuristic uh, method.